Okay, so the question has been raised. So how does all this relate to one's own purpose in life or meaning, meaning of life? What gives life meaning? What's the meaning of life? Well, that's, that's, that's a very good question. And that's right on the money. Because everything is parallel. Quest for potential is proposed as a teleology for the whole cosmic order, as a direction for the, for the, for the universe. Mr. Aristotle proposed that there was a teleology to the universe. He proposed it a couple thousand years ago. And that the thought that the universe has a teleology or direction was dismissed over the last several hundred years by our favorite friends, the randomest people. But teleology is directly related to meaning and purpose. So I would say the purpose of one's individual life is to try to optimize your particular potential, whatever that might be. Is it to be a great photographer? Is it to be a, a great father or all of the above? Or the best father you can be or the best photographer you can be? That you personally can be is to find that pursuit and to go in that direction which optimizes your particular set of potentialities. And this can change as time goes on. Let's say at age 25, you come into some money, then your potentials might change. Let's say at age 25 you're fired and, you're, and you have no money and you're starving. Your, again, your potentials change. Your potentials change given your circumstances. But at each stage of the game, you try to optimize it. At each stage of the game, you don't say, I want to get a Nobel Prize in photography. At each stage, you say, given my assets, what's a realistic short-term goal, medium-term goal, and long-term goal? And then, whether it's a week later, or a month later, or a year later, you reassess, you take stock. Okay, given my new set of assets, currently where I stand, what's my best route towards potential? Potential, of course, is not just, it's not just money or career, but it's the whole cluster of components to our life, whether it's uh, social or family or, uh, or intellectual or emotional. I would say as a matter of principle, we want to build out on all these axes to whatever extent it interests us, to whatever extent it makes sense. <clears throat> and convert, uh, in, in, in coordination, the universe itself is building out the universe is building out emotionally, aesthetically. And the universe itself is building out its own awareness. Many, are, many people, myself included, are into increasing awareness. Well, the universe itself is into building out its own awareness. One can say a primary drive of potential, way eons back, when there was no universe, pre-Big Bang, was to build out its own awareness. And a route towards building out the universe's awareness is through the creation of humans. And through the human awareness build out, the cosmic order builds out its own awareness. These are, sort of, so to speak, profound big statements. But they're basically straightforward statements. Let's say initially there were um, just its and bits floating in the primordial universe. The it's and bits might have wanted awareness, or the awareness of what great awareness is. At each level of awareness, we have a greater awareness of what the next level might be. This interrelated with consciousness, consciousness slash awareness. I'm not going to throw the floor over to you. Take pivot off some of these remarks. Yeah, uh, you know, I find it interesting too that you know a lot of this has actually been in, in um, just the last hundred years. We found that, that it's actually supported in physics. Um, like, uh, you know, for instance, you know, is, is it a photon? Is it, is it a particle or a wave? Well, it turns out it depends on whether or not we look at it. You could, we actually have a real effect on the physical universe by being an observer. And it's uh, being argued a lot, especially by quantum physicists, that the universe couldn't function properly um, without an observer in it, which technically says we or some, something else intelligent has to be here for the universe to actually work which takes kind of the randomness out of it. We had to exist at some point. Um, 
you know, then, you know, I know the, um, the randomness theory, one of the <coughs> things they've tossed out before is their multiversing theory, um, that, you know, all these physical, you know, like all the Planck constants that are necessary <coughs> for the entire universe to function properly, um, that, 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 that could have been set for anything, and we just happen to be in the universe that had the right constants to support the creation of stars and life, and it, really it comes down to Occam's razor. What is hold on, hold on. I don't, want you to get, I don't want to push push the viewers too far too fast, uh -huh. even though they're probably smart on this. Okay. The, let me explain. The randomness people, when confronted with the question of how do we end up, how did a random universe of ours, which they assert is random, end up being so incredible, so beautiful, so sophisticated, so complex, they're forced to jump onto another theory, another incorrect theory, totally incorrect, that there are beyond infinite numbers of universes out there. And one of those universes happened to have all the pieces put together. That our universe, there were infinite numbers of universes, and one of them happened to have it all together with 100 plus constants all correct to like 20, 30, to the powers of 20 or 30. I also studied little probability in engineering school, and probability requires the possibility, not impossibility. And I'm not going to give the speech about why multiverse, as it's currently constituted, is impossible, but my position is that it's impossible and incorrect. And basically, you have two impossible theories hugging each other, randomness and infinite multiverse, to try to each explain the other. But the fact that they hug each other does not make either of them correct. It's a circular reasoning, and um, it simply does not work. It's unfortunate many talented people are wasting their entire careers trying to advance one or both of these interrelated theories. God bless them. But... We'd all be better off if they did more productive things, and if the British journals opened up the discussion, the theories were actually somewhat plausible. Anyway, your take. You know, and, you know, as a, as a scientist, the, the first rule is uh, Occam's razor. If explain, you know, yeah, explain what er, it is, yeah. everything else being equal, the simplest answer is going to be the right one. Normally. The simplest solution. Simplest right. solution. Yeah. Right. You go for the simple so, solution. You don't go for hyper complex solution to problem. Yeah. So, the simplest solution will tend to be. Inevitably, tend to be the correct solution. Yeah. Okay. So the, you know, the, the, my, my options are a. There's an infinite number of universes out there that are all screwed up, and we're magically on just the right one. Or we, are, B, we, are, we are magically just yeah, the right one. Yeah. Right. Or B. There's here, and it's the way it is, and the constants are the way they are, because it's, it's the way it has to be. Potential. It's optimized yeah. potential. Right. Yeah. And it's that's right. built into the formula. It's built into the formula. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, a question was raised, like this. If that's potential is God, how does this all work? Well, that's a very big question. I would just say, perhaps that's potential is divine. Let's keep it more, a little broader. And perhaps we are all part of it. Meaning classically, God is there, we are here. Not all religious thought, but much religious thought. God is there, we are here. But what if there's a strain, for instance, in Judaism, of the Baal Shem Tov, where we're all part of the divine. It's called panentheism. That we're all part of this quest for potential. And we're all a build out of quest potential. And all parts impact the whole. Well, this is a more sublime theory, which makes us part of the process and does not have an authoritarian center dictating to us. On some level, it's the, uh, the collective and we are part of the collective. We seem distinct, but we're all part of the collective. Just like our, our planet seems distinct from the rest of the universe, but according to the theory, everything's interactive. The blade of grass in, in Louisiana is, part, is impacting the stardust in universes light years away from us. It's all part of one integrated system. As, as, although it's a, some of a culture shock to what we, what we were used to. 
And not only is Q4P divine, we are all divine, according to the theory. We're all part of this divinity. And our consciousness is all interacting. You know, so this makes everything much more profound. You know, I got a communication from a Dominican monk, and uh, he said, we like your theory. I said, why do you like my theory? He says, because according to you, everything's connected. It's one large super, super organism. I said, I wouldn't dare to put that in writing, but one can make that case based on the theory. And that makes the theory somewhat more, also somewhat more understandable. Now, what are you saying? What are you saying? Well, Dominican monk said, what you're saying is, it's all one build-out organism from creation. And the organism transcends time and space. And it's cumulative consciousness and fully interactive. And this cumulative organism or superorganism is reaching, searching its potential, trying to build out consciousness, etc. I don't want to bore you. Consciousness, beauty, mercy, all those fine attributes. And in the mix, working its way around the, uh, the, the problem attributes evil, or entropy, or the attributes which are pulled back from the universe reaching its full potential.